for 12 years and though she had spent all she had on physicians no one could cure her she came up behind him him meaning Jesus and touched the fringe of his clothes and immediately her hemorrhage stopped well, then Jesus asked who touched me when all denied it Peter said master the crowd surround you and press in on you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. For I noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. He said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor you on this morning. Truly, you have been faithful unto us, and we pray that we are faithful unto you. We recognize that we are indeed blessed as a family in Micah 7 ministry. We thank you, Lord God, for every scripture that has been read, all things coming forth afterwards, the families gathering together today, amen. But we know now it's time for the bread of life. So, Father, I ask that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, I ask that it is acceptable in 
in your sight, Lord. Uh, you are my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. In this and in all things, we will always be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord the next time you stand that is on you. Amen. This morning, I want to get right into the word of God. I want to encourage all of you today to do it afraid. You want to write that down? Do it afraid. Whatever it is that God is calling for you to do that is hindering you and you're nervous about it, uh, by the end of this sermon, I want you to understand the importance of doing it afraid. Usually I would come up here and I would give you some historical backdrop or knowledge or information, but if you don't mind me jumping right into the text on today, I think that in order to lay it out, there's a particular point that I want to come across on this morning. And so here we have this young lady who had been enduring hardship. She had been going through something for 12 long years. And then the month of September, 12 long years, amen, is over a decade plus two more years. Having gone through something uh, dramatic for the last 19 years, I know what it feels like to have an issue for a long period of time. I don't know if anybody else can identify, uh, uh, because normally when we get to a place uh, of having a hardship, an ailment, or an impediment, or something of that nature, we limit how much time or credit we're going to give to that situation uh, before we may walk away or tap out unless it's in the place uh, of our physical uh, incapabilities. That's one thing uh, that you can't walk away from. You've got to deal with the hand uh, that has been given unto you. Uh, and so it is with this young lady. Twelve years she had been hemorrhaging. Any women understand what hemorrhaging looks like, but just let me give you uh, some historical backdrop so that you are clear about what is transpiring in her life. It is important that I give you contextual background as well so that you understand not only the physical impediments that this woman was having, but also the emotional challenges that went along with this. See, during this period of time when a woman was in that period or that season of her menstrual cycle, she had to separate herself, not only uh, from the ones that she loved, her spouse and uh, her family, but she had to be in isolation, uh, not only for that period of time, uh, but then seven days thereafter until uh, she was able to purify or cleanse herself in water. Uh, uh, she had to be in a position where this ritual uh, uh, would be the only way that she would have access back into uh, the community. So I want you to hear this very clearly. Uh, you're talking about somebody that has been on their own body themselves with no family around them for 12 long years. Some of us uh, can't stay by ourselves for 12 hours, 12 minutes, 12 days, uh, 12 weeks, amen. Uh, so just imagine if you had to be by yourself for 12 uh, long years. Now she didn't take this sitting down. Uh, she went and she had some resources uh, uh, that she began to explore and see uh, what opportunities or options lay ahead. Uh, anybody ever have any issues or any problems? Uh, hallelujah. Yeah, the first thing that you want to do is see how you can solve it. Uh, yeah, let me yeah. pause for a moment and let you know, uh, hallelujah, based off of the issues that you have, uh, your economics will determine your options. I just want y'all to put that in, uh, in there for a moment. Uh, some of us ain't got no money, can't go nowhere with Medicaid. Say you can't get that operation. It just can't happen. Uh, it can't go down. Some of us are in a better position, uh, but we got good jobs. We got uh, insurance cards that will let us go to the finest of doctors. Uh, uh, whatever the situation may have been, uh, this young lady explored all options uh, until she had no more resources left. She had spent everything that she had on physicians. And the Bible says that no one could cure her. There was nothing that could be done. We have been in a period of time since the turn of the century where there have been people from all walks of life. Some started off wealthy, some started off well-to-do, some started off middle class, and over the last 20 years, because 2020 is not the only thing that took us out. I think this has started since the turn of the century, the year 2000. Uh, there have been some people uh, that look back over their life for the last 20 years uh, and feel like they've been in a deficit where they're standing today from where it is that they came in to this century. 
I don't know if that's anybody here at Micah. I'm glad that I'm not in that minority report. Uh, but it is a very true statement. Uh, and so here it is. She heard about, she might have uh, caught wind of all of the work uh, that Jesus had been doing. Because if you look even in this previous chapter where Luke, this particular passage of scripture or this particular Bible narrative uh, really addresses women more than any other of the synoptic gospels. Uh, so we see that Jesus uh, had gone around and he had been quite busy. As a matter of fact, he was on his way to go help Darius' daughter uh, because uh, she had taken ill. Uh, so maybe she heard that Jesus was coming down her block, down the corner, around the neighborhood, uh, and decided maybe this is my option. Anybody got a reputation that goes out before them? Uh, hallelujah, where somebody needs to know who it is uh, that you are. Uh, uh, so they just want to see for themselves. Uh, if I put myself in the mindset of this young lady, uh, her curiosity uh, may have gotten the better of her because she tried all of the people with a sound reputation. She tried uh, all of the individuals that had credentials behind their names. Uh, she tried all of the uh, people uh, uh, that may have been associated or affiliated uh, uh, with the things that ought to identify uh, with healing, but she had not seen uh, hallelujah for her very own self, Jehovah Rapha. Yet, uh, she had come across him. Yet she had heard about him uh, and she decided that even though uh, she was scared to go when she was having no business going out, out in the crowd with the throngs of people. Uh, she decided I'm going to go and do this even if I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. She decided I'm not going to let rituals, I'm not going to let laws, rules, and regulations, I'm not going to allow any of that to hinder my ability to be healed. And see, there's something to be said uh, about the faith walk that this woman had. Uh, hallelujah. That she said, I'm not going to let anybody, uh, what they may say, uh, I'm not going to let the fact that I ain't got no offering to give him. Uh, I'm not going to allow the fact, uh, hallelujah, that ain't nobody driving me uh, or ain't nobody going to walk this long walk with me. Uh, hallelujah. I'm not going to let any of that stop me. Uh, hallelujah. Because I've come this far believing that human is possible. I'm not going to walk away if I see that there might be another option. How do you draw that conclusion, Pastor? Well, I draw that conclusion uh, because she had gone many other places beforehand. Uh, hallelujah, with no results. Uh, uh, anybody ever been so desperate that they're going to try anything they possibly can? Come on now. Just want to put that out there. Desperate times calls. For desperate measures, amen. Uh, and so here it is uh, that she comes up and she doesn't want anybody to see her. She didn't want to come make an announcement about anything. Jesus, I'm in the building. I, I need healing. What you did for them over there? Uh, I saw you heal out that demon possessed man. I, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and touch me uh, and do whatever. She just was like, well, if I could just touch the hem of his guy, if I could just get close enough to touch him, if I could just uh, uh, walk up on him, he ain't got to see me. He don't got to know my name. Uh, but if I could just tap into who it is, uh, that he is. Uh, hallelujah. I think I might be made a whole. But the Bible says, because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, the Bible says uh, that she came up behind him and touched the fringe of his clothes. Uh, hallelujah. I happen to have on a robe today. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. But that would be just the, the very, very small the tail end, uh, the fringe, the outer workings of his garment. She touched that, and the Bible says uh, immediately, it said it ain't take all day. Uh, hallelujah. Immediately, uh, her hemorrhaging stopped. Oh, woman. Hallelujah. Some of us are happy to see her come, but more of us are happy to see her go. Hallelujah. When the hemorrhaging stops. I don't know about anybody else. I've had a migraine for the last two days. Hallelujah. My body has been aching. Hallelujah. But when the hemorrhaging stops. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something. Hallelujah. Immediately takes place in your body where you start to feel a little bit more normal. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped. Now, I, I want to point out right here that it does not say that she had been made whole or that she was completely healed. It just simply says uh, that her hemorrhage stopped. Anybody ever have one situation resolved but everything wasn't taken care of? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Anybody ever been in that position where you stopped the bleeding? And that's metaphorically speaking, uh, hallelujah, but you ain't out of the hole yet. Uh, Oh, let me make this financially speaking. Uh, hallelujah. Now you know where the bottom is uh, of your situation, but you still don't know how you're going to climb up out of it yet. Uh, anybody ever had that uh, immediate response uh, that allows you to breathe, but you still don't know? Uh, hallelujah. If the dust has settled yet? Come on. Come on. Yeah. 
Immediately, her hemorrhaging stopped. And then Jesus asked, who touched me? Who, 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 who touched me? Now, this is a crowded environment. You just walk just a little bit. Uh, people and crowds are all around. Now, Jesus has been healing and delivering all day. Uh, hallelujah. I'm sure anybody ever been to any marches or anything of that nature? Hallelujah. If you've gone out to a concert uh, or anything, I don't want to make it all super serious. Or, uh, hallelujah. Even if you did a Black Lives Matter march. Uh, hallelujah. If you're walking with the crowd, eventually uh, somebody's going to touch you. They're going to bump into you. They're going to do all of those things. Uh, they walk around. Heck, if I walk in the crowd, Grocery store, hallelujah, just trying to stay six feet away from somebody. God. Oh, somebody still touches me, God. inevitably. So normally you don't pick up on uh, those things unless they hit you with their car and then you look at them like, you ain't going to apologize, you ain't going to say nothing. Okay, maybe that's not just me. That's <laughs> that might be me, that might be me. That might be me, I don't know who she is. Okay? Hallelujah. So Jesus says, who touches me? And then when all the died, and Peter, Peter always got something to say. Peter was like, you know, he, 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 he breaks it down. He says, man, so all these crowds around you and pressing down to you, but I mean, you ask it like, that's just, a, anybody ever have a conversation with somebody and you feel like they're asking a dumb question? Right. Peter is that one that will turn around and act as if he has the authority to ask God about a dumb question in his mind. Let me put it in his mind because I want to protect all of us. Uh, hallelujah. But Peter's like, look at all of these people around here. If I do this 21st century style, all these people around here, and you worried about somebody touching you. Uh, God, that can't you see? Uh, hallelujah. A lot of people around. Uh, crowds are going everywhere. Uh, hallelujah. Why are you concerned about this touch? Jesus is questioning in my mind. Uh, hallelujah. What he just simply said is, uh, Jesus, there's a lot of people around here. Uh, somebody might have bumped you just by accident. They may, they may have, a, you know, just touched into you or tapped into you. We don't know. Jesus, who touched you? It's a lot of people around here, but Jesus responds in a way uh, that I think is very important. Now, mind you, uh, uh, the young lady with the woman with the issue of blood, uh, hallelujah, who stopped hemorrhaging, uh, says nothing at this point, uh, hallelujah, because she's still trying uh, to be deep undercover. I want y'all to hold on to that. She ain't trying to let nobody know. Uh, hallelujah. Have you ever been healed, delivered, and set free from somebody? Uh, and it ain't just the time to tell people uh, what has transpired yet. Uh, hallelujah, because it's not all the way done. Uh, hallelujah. Anybody? 99, have you been I saw it as well. 99 and a half on two. Uh, hallelujah. I just want to get to the end. Uh, I want to make sure it's all real solidified. Uh, hallelujah. Anybody understand uh, what it is that I'm talking about? Uh, but Jesus says, Someone uh, touched me for I noticed that power had gone out from me. I, I, this is aspirational for me. What do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean uh, about this being aspirational? Uh, I want to be able to touch God where He know, uh, Hallelujah! That I have taken something from Him. Uh, I want to be so close to God. Uh, I want my faith level to be so high and so intense. Uh, I want my relationship uh, and my faith in Him to be so legitimate. Uh, now when I come, uh, Hallelujah! Even if I don't get all the way in the door, uh, Hallelujah! If I knock, God is responding uh, and know that I am there. I, I, I want to be aspirational in that fact, uh, hallelujah, that if I could just touch uh, the hem of his garden, and uh, I want to be made whole. Uh, I just want to know that if I just call on the name of Jesus, uh, he's right there asking God, uh, what is it that you want? What is it that you need? Uh, if I just open up my mouth, uh, if I just wave my hand, uh, I want Jesus to be able to take my God in. But the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, Somebody touched me, uh, but I noticed that power has gone out from me. Uh, hallelujah, whatever you got, God. Uh, hallelujah, transfer it on over to me. I can only imagine. I have a very vivid imagination. Jesus turning around, looking around at the crowd. <laughs> I don't want to be the person that, he know it ain't you. <laughs> he know you ain't all these things. He know you ain't got no juice over there. <laughs> so if I were to just use my theological imagination for a moment, it wasn't nobody close to Jesus. It wasn't nobody in his immediate crowd. Mm. Jesus. It wasn't nobody that he was hanging with every day. Those familiar faces, those touches, that comfortability here, it wasn't none of them. 
I just wanted to point that out because I just thought that was very interesting because there's some people that's all the way around you. You think, hallelujah, that they can draw from you and you can draw from them. Uh, you ain't getting nothing from that well right there. I just want to tell you, uh, hallelujah, you may want to expand your tent, uh, hallelujah, because the people, the people you think you can draw from, uh, ain't got nothing to give you. Put that out there just for, that's for us, the American people. Uh, hallelujah, but when the woman saw that she could not remain hidden. Uh, this is why we got to do it afraid. Uh, she came trembling, uh, falling down before him. Uh, she declared in the presence of all uh, of the people why uh, she had touched him and how uh, she had been immediately healed. There comes a moment in your life that first of all, whatever it is that has been pressed in your spirit, you've got to do it in spite of what others might say. There comes a moment in your life when you have been working deep undercover, working very hard, and you're starting to see the progress. Hallelujah. And all is on the line. And you feel like I might lose it all if I share what is happening to me. Sometimes you've got to do it afraid. There comes moments in your life when you've got to let others know what has been going on. Even if uh, you're worried that they might uh, laugh at you or might ridicule you or might uh, think that you say you can't do it, uh, I need you to do those things uh, afraid. Uh, I want you to understand why uh, this is essential. Let me correlate this. Uh, hallelujah. Because this young lady, uh, hallelujah, had done everything deep undercover, stepped in the darkness. Uh, she didn't want to get in trouble with no administration uh, or anybody. Uh, but she never stopped working on her getting uh, her healing. She never stopped working uh, on getting deliverance. She didn't never stop working uh, on being set free. Uh, hallelujah. And there came a moment of reckoning. Uh, why do you say that? Uh, because the Lord did not change uh, from the time that she got healed or been made whole uh, or stopped hemorrhaging uh, to the point in which Jesus uh, called her out. Uh, I want you to understand uh, that at some point, uh, you've got to say, this is who I am uh, and what it is that I've been doing. Uh, and this is all that I've got and it's on the line. Why is this important? This is important, uh, hallelujah, because all of the labor, hallelujah, that you put into uh, doing a thing, uh, hallelujah, is going to be, prophetically speaking, uh, it is going to be validated by God. Uh, but you've got to stand up uh, for what it is that you believe in. Uh, Y'all catch that later. Hallelujah. He says to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. That was a missing link that she would have never got to. Because here's what we do sometimes. Uh, if the situation has been resolved, we'll go on and move on for another day. Uh, hallelujah. But if I'm not bleeding anymore, uh, hallelujah, I'm going to go on about my very own business again. Uh, hallelujah. I may not look for uh, the whole wholeness uh, that is important. Uh, I may not look for the validation of God uh, to tell me that all is well. Uh, keep on moving. Uh, but here it is. Uh, this is a faith conversation. Uh, if she would not have stood up uh, and identified herself, uh, we don't know when the narrative would be. Uh, but Jesus turned around uh, and he he said to her, daughter, it's your faith that will make you whole. I need you to go ahead and keep on doing what you're doing. I need that validation from God that all that I have done was worthy in his sight and to keep on doing it. Beloved, on this morning, I want to tell you how important it is to do it afraid. I want you to understand that you've come this far by faith. And faith is going to keep you moving you forward. I want you to understand this morning that if you do not look for the affirmation or the validation of God, some of your situation might be resolved, but you will not get the all all clear or all okay sign. There comes a moment where you've got to let the world know that God has been good to me. Amen. There's some point in your life where you got to be willing to stand up against the opposition that justly may even have the right to stone you, but you have been changed, touched by God. When this woman said, uh, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, uh, she had no idea uh, what was going to transpire publicly. Uh, she was just looking for something private uh, to happen. Any of us have private secret prayers? Uh, hallelujah. That it's just between me and God. Uh, but he might want to put that situation uh, on full display. Uh, you better let him do it, even if you're afraid. Yeah. Amen. I 
as you stand to your feet. Here's the thing that is very important for us to know. The church will tell you, God does not give us the spirit of fear. It's one of the biggest scriptures that they'll throw back at you. And while the scripture says that, I'm talking about moving forward, being afraid of consequences. But knowing that in spite of the consequences, I still must do what God say do. Do it afraid. I'm talking about moving forward, knowing that you're putting yourself on full display. You might be stalled, but in spite of that, you still got to go forward. The only way that you can do it afraid is if you know that God is real. See, I ain't even going to say God is in your life. I need you to know God is real. I need you to know that God is real. And so if on this morning I'm going to say a prayer, amen, if on this morning you don't know him for yourself, but everything that you did in your own right, your own might, your own authority did not work out for you, I'm just going to tell you to try Jesus this morning. Because like the song that it says, he never failed any of us yet. God the Father sent Jesus as his son who died on the cross just for us so that we might be connected back to him. It is the faith book that allows us to get there. And the one thing that I know is every obstacle that I have had to face, hallelujah, I'd rather do it with Jesus in my life. But while we're in his presence, I want you to understand how important it is to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my ammunition. It is what I need to keep going forward for me. The first is gift of the Holy Spirit. Here, she abides on the inside of you and allows you to move forward doing whatever it is that God has told you to do. Afraid or not. Concerned about what other people are thinking or not. On this morning, there are even some individuals that find themselves in a place that they just need to touch the hem of God's garment. And you've got to trust and believe that you'll be made whole. I don't know where you fall under that parameter, but when I pray on this morning, wherever it is that you stand, say, God, uh, this is me. I need to get on right here and touch me. And I believe God will meet you right where it is that you're standing. Because he's that kind of wonderful. He's that kind of sensitive. He's that kind of amazing. We serve an awesome God. And I don't care what it is that God has called for you to do. There is going to be fear in it. But if I could just, if I could just, all things become possible in God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor you on this morning. We thank you. Hallelujah. Because of where it is that we are right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all because of you. Uh, hallelujah. Because we've stepped out in spite of circumstances uh, to get to you. Uh, there is somebody under the sound of my voice, oh God. Uh, hallelujah. That has got to reimagine their life. Uh, hallelujah. With different sets of circumstances. Uh, Father, I pray, oh God, that they would put you as a foundational piece of their life and say, God, where you lead me, uh, this time I'm going to follow up. Uh, forgive me for thinking that I had enough on the inside of me uh, not to consult you or ask you uh, to come be the Lord over my life. Forgive us, oh God, I'm willing to change uh, my way and work it out uh, as you see fit. Father, God, I'm here, oh God, uh, endow me and quit me, uh, bless me with the Holy Spirit, uh, lead me and guide me, teach me, uh, let me know what it is uh, that you are calling crafted and created uh, for me to do. And God, I ask while I am here, uh, whatever you put inside of me, Lord God, uh, in front of me, Lord God, uh, all around me, let me be willing uh, to do and fulfill my purpose and destiny, uh, even if I'm afraid. Father, I want to be all that you envisioned and imagined me to be. I'm standing proxy for your sons and your daughters on this morning. We are committed to doing all that you have envisioned for us, even if we've got to do it afraid. In this and in all things, Father, we'll always be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and bless God. Into the house, we come and start by faith. 
I think we'll grab the mic. We come this far by faith. You know the words of the song, sing it. Lean on the Lord. On this morning, we have three uh, babies that are being dedicated. Amen. I'm asking all of the parents and the children and the godparents to come up to the front now. He never failed. He We're going to ask the Holiday family to be here. We're going to ask the Sufran family to be here. And we're going to ask the Wilkes family to be right here. Working on getting that last thing for that young lady right there. Father's Lord, amen. I need the Father on my right hand. Okay, you stand right here. You stand right there. Shimana, you stand next to him. That you stand there. Amen. Amen. Okay, all of the kids, amen. God bless you all. Amen. I want the Father, you stand right there. Amen. You come on, stand right here. Amen. 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 One more time. Keep going. He never failed me. just say that it is indeed a privilege. Amen. Y'all step back just a little bit right there. Amen. Y'all step back just a little bit right there. Amen. It is indeed a privilege. Amen. Uh, to be able to stand as the spiritual head. Amen. On this morning for such a solemn and wondrous occasion. Juju, I'm going to need you to put. Amen. At least lower the volume. Amen. Children are a gift from God. Psalms 127 and 3 proclaims that sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from him. As believers, we are called to recognize that children belong first and foremost to God. God in his goodness gives children as gifts to their parents. They are not only have the awesome responsibility of caring for this wonderful gift, but it is also the wonderful privilege of enjoying the gift of parenthood. Because children belong to God and are given by grace as gift to parents, it is only proper and appropriate that the children be dedicated back to God. We are told in 1 Samuel 1 that Hannah presented her son, Samuel, to the Lord. In Luke 2, 22, we read that Mary and Joseph brought their baby Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in order to present him before the Lord. In the same way, Aziz and Shavana, Tamara, Kyrie and Jasmine, today they bring their respective child, Sadie, Major, and Kyrie Jr., presenting themselves first and then these beautiful babies before the Lord our God. Accompanying them and making this commitment are Sadie's godmother, Miss Mitchell Slade, Major's godparents, that may be with us virtually, Claudine, Dalbester, Diara, Christopher, Aaliyah, Stewart, Deshaun Torres, and then Kyrie Jr.'s godmother, yours truly, Reverend Dr. Nicole B. Simpson. As well as Sadie's sister, where's Summer? Summer, come on, come on up, baby. I'm sorry, I didn't see that you weren't with your parents. This is a family occasion, amen? Is, is that your sister? Come on up, sister, you're part of the family. Take a village to raise, amen? Amen. As well as Sadie's sister, Summer, and Major's brothers, Julius, Bryson, and Liam. Parents, I call your attention to the command of God recorded in Holy Scripture. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 through verse 7 tells us this. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on their children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. God's instructions are plain. Parents, love God with every ounce and fiber of your energy and teach your child to do the same. And as you love God, one another, and all of the members of your family, you will model before this child a wonderful love for God that he will want for himself. Aziz and Shavana, by coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and Sadie to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying, we do. Tamara, by coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourself and major to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying, I do. Kyrie and Jasmine, by coming forward before God and his people, do you declare your desire to dedicate yourselves to Kyrie Jr. and Kyrie Jr. to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying, we do. Having come freely, I ask now that you enter into the following commandment in the presence of God and his people. For any father not holding their child, please take the baby. This is a sign of spiritual headship in the family. So that Sadie Major and Kyrie may walk in the abundant life that Christ that Christ offers do you parents vow by God's help and partnership with the church to provide your children a Christian home of love and peace to raise them in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline and to encourage them one day trust Jesus as his savior and Lord please respond by we do Modeling this kind of love cannot be done alone. It requires the help of others. And for this reason, parents call upon the help of God, parents. And now I direct my questions to you, but before saying such a thing, I need you to understand God parents are not money machines. God parents are not the ones that every time you need something for a child, they are the ones to call. They are here to support and assist you in the rearing, the spiritual rearing of your child. Godparents have the freedom and the liberty to move forward accordingly as they see fit. I need you to understand that, parents. Do not utilize the pressure of God in front of parent as a way of manipulation. This is not what this is for. Now, if your kid is tore up from the floor, uh, come see the godparents. Because that means we may not have done an adequate enough job in help rearing your children spiritually. <laughs> By coming forward before God and his people, God parents, do you declare your desire to help the parents fulfill the vow they have just made by becoming Sadie Major and Kyrie's godparents? If so, respond by saying we do, but for those of you that are online, simply text I do for your public announcements. We do. Having come freely, I ask now that you enter into the following commitment so that Sadie Major and Kyrie Jr. may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you vow by God's help to encourage, correct, through praise and correction, the parents in their effort to raise these children in the fear of the Lord, to hold them up in prayer, and if anything should happen to the parents, to assume responsibility in helping these children receive our Lord's guidance and instructions. We do. 
Finally, church, I ask that you make a vow as well. There is no proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. Parents have that first responsibility, but parents do need the help and support of the community. So now I direct my questions to the church. Being present in God's house today, do you hereby declare yourselves to be the children of God because you trust in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life? If this is true, please respond by saying, we do. Amen. Having come freely, I ask now that you make the following commitment to those who stand before you so that Sadie, Major, and Kyrie Jr. may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you vow, by God's help, to be faithful in your calling as members of the body of Christ, to help these parents to be faithful to God, and to help teach and train Sadie, Major, and Kyrie Jr. in the ways of the Lord so that they may, have, may one day have trust in Christ as Savior and Lord? If you accept this responsibility, please respond by saying, we do. Amen. At this time, we want to pray for the children. Amen. My hands are cold. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we dedicate your daughter back unto you now in the name of Jesus. Tamara. Father, in the name of Jesus, we now dedicate Major back into the hands of you now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we dedicate Kyrie Jr. now back in the hands of you now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask each of the parents to come with me and the children. Amen. Pastor is supposed to hold them, but it's three kids, so that's why I'm asking y'all to come. Amen. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for all of the families represented here on today. We pray that you would touch them, that you would lead them, that you would guide them. We pray that the entire church, the congregation, will stand proxy with them and for them. We pray, Lord God, that we will not only undergird them with the word of God, but also in our lifestyle. We will be mere reflections, Lord God, of who it is that you are, and that we will be great examples of who they can aspire to be. In this and in all things, we will always be careful to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, amen, we do have certificates and um, the baby dedication. Amen. For those of us that are on social media, we can discontinue that now. Amen. Um, amen. Amen. You can begin to prepare your